So you are building a car audio system and you have amplifiers, a DSP, or other gear that needs to be mounted. We don't want all that gear bouncing around in the vehicle. We want to properly mount it to a rack. So how do we go about doing this correctly? What materials should we use and what specialized tools? What kind of challenges did I face along the way making this amplifier rack for three amps and a DSP? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get started. So to kick things off, I know that I want to install the amplifiers behind the seats here, so it's going to be best if I can get the seats out of the vehicle. Now, no matter what vehicle you're working on, there's generally a couple of rules that you want to follow. First of all, if you do happen to find any sort of sensors or anything that you need to disconnect, it's always a good idea to undo the ground terminal on the battery before you do so. Otherwise, Otherwise, there's just going to be a series of different bolts that we need to take out. Let's get it done. So now that we've got the seat out of the way, we have a nice clean blank slate and we can start to get an idea where we want to put our gear. Now, since the spare tire jack is on this side, I wanna do my best to retain that. So I'm gonna be using from about here over for the amplifier rack. I wanna make sure that I have plenty of room and I've noticed that there's actually like a good inch and a half behind this piece of material here that we could definitely use. So I'll likely be making a modification to this material to get it out of the way so that we can have the plastic piece for the amplifier rack right up against the metal there and I'm already kind of looking at some of the different mounting locations that we can use to hold in the amplifier rack but I do want to get an idea how much of this material I'll need to cut out of the way. To get an idea where I want the DSP to be mounted as well as the amplifiers and the other gear that's going onto the amplifier rack I could just kind of hold each of these pieces in place, but I have a better suggestion for you guys when you're in this part of the planning phase. What we can do is we can take some cardboard or some paper, any type of material that's easy to cut out. In this case, I'm using this chipboard. We can position our piece of gear on the material and then we're gonna trace around it and then simply make that cut. When you're doing this process, it's a good idea to also mark out each of the different locations of the power wire, the ground wire, the remote lead, the RCAs, and the speaker leads. So we repeat that process until we have one of these for each of our different pieces of gear. I've got two for the two smaller amplifiers, one for the big subwoofer amplifier. I've got a bunch for the fuse accessory panel and the distribution blocks here. And then I also have one for the DSP. On the DSP here, I do wanna take a quick second to thank monthly channel sponsor Audio Control because I'm gonna be using the Audio Control DM810. This DSP allows us to take speaker level inputs from a factory car audio system. We can connect them into the DSP and then we then have all these RCAs out. But where the magic really happens is we can connect to this with a cell phone, a tablet, or a computer, and we can completely tune each of our outputs. We can control time alignment, equalization, crossovers. We can also use the AccuBase functionality, which helps restore some of the missing factory base if need be. Tons of functionality built into this box. Looking forward to using it in this system. If you guys want to learn more, check out the link down in the video description. So the benefits of making these cardboard cutouts are a couple of different things. First of all, we don't have to worry about scratching any of our expensive gear, putting any marks on it while we're working on coming up with a plan for how we want it laid out. Also, this cardboard is nice and light, so we can just take a piece of tape on the back side here and we can easily get an idea for our layout. By doing this, we can make sure that we only cut away as much material as we're going to need. We can do a really optimized layout, so I'm going to work on that now. So after quite a bit of repositioning, sticking these back on and off, this is the layout that I've come up with. We first have the distribution blocks over here, and then the three amplifiers up top, and the DSP over there, and then that final accessory fuse block here. So the reason for having the amplifier shifted to the top here is each of these amplifiers has a cover plate on the top of it that has a bunch of setting dials underneath. By having them on the top here, when I fold down the seats, the seats kind of come in 
guard this area here. This way I'll be able to see each of these settings easily with the seats folded down. There's still plenty of room though. It goes about this far out that I can access this fuse block if need be to replace any of those fuses. The same goes for the main fuse distribution block and the ground distribution block here. When I fold down the seat, I have access to each of those. Now with the DSP over on this side, what's nice about this layout here is I can have all of the signal wires. In other words, the RCA signal going into the DSP ran on this side of the vehicle. I can then have obviously the RCA outputs going to each of the different amps, but then all the speaker wires can also be collected to this side. The passenger side of the vehicle here is where the battery is up front, so I can do all my power lead runs on this side of the vehicle, keeping all of the power separate from all of the signal. This is just a best practice procedure to try to keep the power away from the signal. But do keep in mind, there's going to be cases where, you know, like right here, I'm going to have these subwoofer speaker wire leads that are gonna come out and those are gonna be close to these power leads. What you're trying to avoid here is having the power running next to the signal for a large amount of distance. It's okay if the power and the signal cross or if they're close to each other for a short distance because we're using high quality amplifiers here. We're gonna have plenty of noise Rejection. We're using high quality RCAs, but it's just a good best practice, like I mentioned. Now, if this was a smaller amplifier rack with maybe one or just two amplifiers over in this location here, I think I could get away with using this factory bolt location and bending a tab of the amplifier rack, you know, making it out of plastic and then heating it up and bending it so it could fold back here. But with the massive size of this amp rack and quite a bit of weight, just using that one bolt there isn't going to work. And there are no factory bolt locations on this location of the wall. So I am going to need to make some new holes. I'm gonna show you guys the right way to do that. We're not gonna just take drywall screws and zip them into the metal. We're to do it right i'll be showing you that in a little bit in the meantime i'm going to take some pictures on my phone of the layout here so that i can remember but the other nice thing about this layout here is overall this is just a rectangle that i'm going to need to cut i can measure the dimension from here over to about here because i know it's longer than 48 inches overall so i'm going to keep that dimension probably 48 inches and then i'm going to measure from the bottom up to here and make that rectangular piece that's going to sit in here Kind of a side note here, but you guys might find this interesting like I did. So this is sound treatment that's applied from the factory, which means obviously they consider this area something that needs to be sound treated because it causes some sort of noise. This is how it was. I haven't already started pulling this away. This was already like this right here. You can see that it's pulled away at the top. It's not even pushed down into the little channel here. See how I can push it in further there? This is not the correct way to apply sound treatment. This side's a little bit better, but again, look, right here, I can get my fingers behind that. I don't know that they use a ruler at all. It seems like they kind of just smack it in there and it's good to go. So we're definitely gonna pull this off and we're going to use the right materials to get this done right. So I've got that OEM sound treatment out of the way. Now, before I can put the new aftermarket sound treatment on there, I do want to mark out my mounting holes for the amp rack. So in the meantime here off camera, I've cut my piece of plastic here. This is quarter inch HDPE that I'm gonna be using for the amp rack. And I've drilled some mounting holes in this. And I determined the location of those holes based on where this largest indent is that I can land on. So I'm gonna have mounting holes here here, here, and here. Now I'll make up the height difference between some of these surfaces on the back side of the amplifier rack by just using some scrap pieces of the plastic. I'm going to have to shim the amp rack away from the wall anyhow because I want to allow clearance for this vent here. These vents, if you're not familiar with what those are for, when you close the doors of the vehicle, you want the pressure to be able to escape the vehicle and it allows the door to close. Otherwise, if you didn't have those, the doors don't close quite correctly. If you're wondering about the amplifier rack being in front of these, remember that the factory piece here, that factory carpet piece, that does have like a rubberized material on the back side that even presses up against this. So it's not really a concern. These little vents, they open extremely easily. I'm barely touching them there and you can see it allows the air to go out. So as long as I have a little gap between my vent and the back side of the panel, it's going to be just fine. So back to adding a proper mounting solution in this back wall here, I do want to determine 
where these holes are going to be located before I do the aftermarket sound treatment because I don't want to have to be drilling through sound treatment materials. There's nothing worse than doing that. I want to get my mounting locations first and then I'll cut around those when I'm putting in the sound treatment. So to mount this amp rack the correct way, we need a couple of different specialized tools here. What we're going to be using is these. These are called riv nuts. Basically, this is a rivet that we can drill and apply into the metal. We're going to cinch it up using a special tool, and then this gives us a threaded hole that we can use machine fasteners with. After we mark our hole locations, we're going to use this. This is a step drill that will allow us to drill up to the size of hole that we need for our rivet. Once once we've made that hole, we want to apply some touch-up paint to the edge of that metal to seal it back up and make sure that we're not going to have any corrosion. Next, we'll use our special riv nut applicator tool. We're going to apply the riv nut to the tool. I'll put a link to this down in the video description for you guys. And once we turn on our drill with that riv nut in the hole, it's going to crimp that riv nut down. Now I'm able to easily bolt in this amp rack using those threaded fasteners. And now that I know where each of those locations are, I can make a hole around them while I do the sound treatment. So now that I have all the sound treatment applied, I do have a couple more things I want to do to the plastic of the amp rack before I start mounting the amplifiers and mounting it in there. The first thing is these corners here, they're a sharp corner, they're kind of unfinished. I want to round those over, so I'm going to use a flush trim bit on the router along with some radius templates and each of those corners to round those out. Now that each of the corners is rounded, the next thing I want to do is this edge here is a 90 degree angle as well. So I'm going to use a round over bit to smooth that out just to give it a more finished look and feel. Now these edges are smooth as a baby's bottom and we can move on to mounting all of our different gear on the rack. Now there's a couple of different tools that we need to do this. First set of tools that's handy to have is a set of center punches. This allows you to mark out the exact center of a hole for each of these different amplifiers and DSPs and the other gear. It's also handy to have a transfer punch so that we can make sure that that hole is good and deep so that we can easily start a drill bit in it. Now, why are we going to be using a drill bit? Well, some guys like to use normal screws like this and they'll just zip them into the plastic. But the problem with that is that if you need to take the gear on and off multiple times, if you need to service it, it kind of degrades the quality of hold on each of those holes. So what I'd rather do is I'm going to drill and then tap the plastic because this is a nice dense plastic that we can easily tap. And then we can use these small machine screws to hold each of the pieces of gear in. So we can of course repeat that process several times for all of the amplifiers, any other gear that we need to mount. And here it is guys, we've now got the DSP mounted along with the two mids and highs amplifiers and the subwoofer amplifier. Everything good to go. Let's do a test fit in the vehicle. All right guys, get ready for the grand reveal here. Here it is, we've got all of the amps along with the amplifier rack and DSP completely mounted up here in the vehicle. I am so excited with the way that this turned out. What's super nice about this is we can fold down the seats, have easy access to all the different settings if need be. Obviously I have the cover plates off of each of these amplifiers just for right now. And you guys can see that I made my cut to the carpet piece to allow for full clearance of the panel. We were able to rigidly mount this assembly with the several different bolts on the rack so that we know it's good and tight in here. We've reapplied aftermarket sound treatment in there, and I have a nice little space here that will allow for my fuse distribution blocks along with down here. We're gonna have access to all of that, and that's what's gonna be coming up in the next video is doing all the wiring for these amplifiers and DSP. If you'd like to catch that wiring video, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Remember that next time you need a digital signal processor for your car audio build, definitely check out Audio Control with their DM series lineup of DSPs. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching, and I'll see you in the next one.